his ability to stay strong on his own throw. Here, though, Mensah has got a chance to break him early, and it could be pivotal. That's perfect. That's why. Great effort. And you're right, Dan, because Gurney is very strong on his turn. This is a slow start from Darrell. Finding his range, though, and a lot of players in that spot there could potentially give up on the leg, but Darrell didn't. He used that throw to find his range in preparation for the next one if he doesn't get any more chances. He, he battles, he fights, he doesn't give you anything easily, Darrell Gurney, and that looks awkward. Can he Hi. fire it underneath? No well, score. he's tried to, hasn't he? Now you require 44. This is why you should never give up on a leg. You just never know. You think it's all over, but it isn't. And he's turned it around. And the statistic books that you will find and all of the tables online will say that Darrell Gurney held his throw again. Yeah, he really is solid this year, Darrell Gurney, without being spectacular. You know, he, he sits 13th on the averages list. He's averaging 96. It's a solid game. I think it's funny that Sulevich was one of the heavy hitters that was eliminated early in the World Championships. No, I'm not laughing about the fact that he was eliminated. <laughs> My point being that he wore a new shirt of the Worlds, and we haven't seen it since. Yeah. Because I get the feeling Mr. Sulevich is a little bit superstitious. That shirt went in the bin immediately after that performance, and he's gone back to the old one ever since. He has been tinkering with little things. And he's, I don't think he's substantially changed his darting setup. It's just the colours of it. He had the black darts, now they're silver. He's changed the colour of the stems. The, the flights are new, although they look the same shape. 60. Yeah, I think everything's the same. I remember when he went to the, the darker coated dart, and that was when he won Risa, his first PDC title. And he used those to great effect for a period of 18 months. But he's gone back to the natural coloured tungsten dart now, and to the white stem and the white flight, which is very fetching. You go through stages, don't you, of what you want to see in the dartboard. Daryl, on the other hand, gold dart, golden coloured flight, slightly undersized standard G2. flight, long stem, very long setup, but it's something that hasn't changed a lot in the last four or five years. Mm. He, he experimented very, very briefly for half a game, in fact with some new darts and then decided, nope, not for me. Going back to his old trusted setup and you'll see him in the practice room before play starts, punching his flights and getting everything set up, having spare sets of flights and stems already set up with the, the little rubber rings that he uses. Everything's there, everything's set up that he's used for a long while, that he's happy with and leads to consistent displays or at least helps. It's a good subject that we might come back to that in the next leg and talk about what guys do in the practice room as, uh, as well as practice. Double five. Misses it, doubles so until then, but that only just went in the corner. Game called by George Noble. But yeah, it, well, I always found, and I think James Wade's exactly the same. I think Daryl's the same. When you enter a practice room, that what you don't really do is just put your bag on the table, 60. get your darts out your bag and start throwing. Players aren't like that. You walk into the room, usually magnetised towards someone that they like, unless you're in the final when there's only one person in the room and you don't tend to like them at that point. Mm -hmm. You do things that calm you down. Daryl's one of those guys who gets a load of flights out, gets his hole punch out, punches a whole bunch of these because he expects to be here all, all day. 100. Puts the rings through the holes. It's very therapeutic stuff. Well, it's processes, isn't it? It's, it's you, you know, you do the things, you go through your processes, your preparation. And a lot of players, if they haven't gone through, if they haven't, you know, even practice games, it's things like that. As Mensor, hang on, he's hit five perfect darts here. That's six. And Mensor Suljevic, having missed darts to break Gurney in the opening leg of this one, has put in the perfect start to try and break him here. 141 needed for Mensor Sulevic to produce the second nine data of the weekend.
Not to be. We all fancied another one after we saw Beaton get that nine. Still a very good leg, and he's putting so much pressure on the gurney throw. Yes, Darrell got away with leg one. He might not be getting away with this one. Sulevich is hot on scoring today. Yeah, lightning quick start for Mensor Sulevich in this match. He's playing quicker as well. He's not been drawn into a really deliberate game like he did with another Northern Irishman last night with Mansell. Slow zoom for double top. And this time, Mensor pins it for an 11 darter. It's those legs that often people have to produce to break the gurney throw. He's been shaking that right forearm a lot in this match so far. Just watch out for that. Maybe there's a bit of tightness there. Well, Mentor, I wouldn't complain with what's happened so far. You've played very well. Well, it was a, a game that lasted the best part of 40 minutes yesterday with Mickey Mansell. But it was not this quality because Mensor has hit four 180s. Only at the very start of leg four here. Cullen was like that yesterday. He had four 180s after four legs. That's the young gentleman that was on stage before the proceeding start this afternoon and was gladly surprised by Peter Wright. He's in again. Oh, my. He's giving it the full Ted Law there. He's in again. Well, Mentor Sulevich has found his range here in the treble 20 and is threatening to take Darrell Gurney to the cleaners because even Gurney, who is a big scorer, is going to struggle to live with this if it continues. Yeah, Gurney doing ton and 140 stuff is not enough at the minute. That's what he's done in this leg. Well, the, the weird thing is, if these guys are hitting one treble, Six they're hitting two or three in a visit because Gurney's had one ton score and five ton 40s. Mensal's had six ton scores and four ton 80s. 100. That's what you call squeezing the juice out of the lemon. This is Plenty of process going into the first start. He'll stay there. He may go to the bullseye now, we'll leave 96. 65. Yeah, that's very smart from Sulevich. Oh, there's still a chance here for Gurney to break back. Even though this isn't going to go, 96 is no gimme. 60. Well, he's elected to gamble on that 96. treble and he's not got it, which means he's going to have to use all three darts to finish 101, whereas Mensal could get a couple of darts for the leg. Perfect. Now, can he find double 18? No. 60. That is five now shots of double 18 and no results. Six, in fact. Six. Because he missed one at the end of the one five six in the very of first. Of he did. Bullseye. Now. See, there is the trade-off. If you want to try and leave 61. double 16, that's okay. Messi but you're going to have less 36. of a chance to take the leg. You're only going to get one dart. Mensa had two. He didn't take them. But it, I think that the tactic of leaving 96 as opposed to 101 is the right thing to do. And I'm an old school kind of guy with counting. I've had to adapt my game because of that same thing. And he's not happy with that 16 dart leg as soon but he'll be very happy with the scoreline so far. Yeah, well, 3-1 he is averaging a significant chunk more than Gurney. And you see, almost 15 points, completely outscoring him. As all those two treble visits for Gurney have been turned into three treble visits by Mensor. But there have been little chances. It could have been two, two all in this. If you only letting your opponent have one shot at double for every 11 you're 16. getting, you would fancy yourself to close it out. Yeah, you would. We were remarking about the lovely shade of pink on Daryl Gurney this afternoon. Yeah. We were trying to decipher the exact 16. name for that kind of pink. Yeah, I mean, what was it? Fuchsia was your offering. Fuchsia. I think that's pretty good. Oh, we got one vote for Magenta in my ear from the production team. 
makes me well it reminds me his shirt that uh, I'm looking to put some azaleas on my garden <laughs> I'm not sure Daryl's in the garden, but he does. There's like a bit of machinery, doesn't he, with the old cars. Yeah, loves his cars. He's going to have to you know, get under the bonnet of this performance and try and figure out how to get things running. Well, it went 8-5 in their most recent meeting in the Premier League, and it was a strange game because there was a lot of missed doubles from Daryl Gurney. Here, he's not even being allowed the chance to miss doubles. But if he can hold his throw here, and he does leave himself a makeable check out, then it's only a one-leg gap. And for all the explosive scoring of Mensor Suljevic so far in this match... You mentioned Suljevic is not going to be going to the Pro Tours midweek ahead of the Premier League on Thursday. I think Daryl Gurney is. So I would say Daryl Gurney would have to be one of the favourites for those two titles. 85 left. Is he going to stay on the 19s? No. That's a great dart. Double top. 64. As you're going 180. Well, it's 118. And he's going to get a dart at tops. Double 18 hasn't really been working for him. And double top lets him down. Could have been four. It's a good job George Noble was a little bit further away though. Otherwise he was getting a clip from Sulevich. From that backhander. And Daryl Gurney has given a metaphorical backhand at the Sulevich. By clipping tops out. I just had a little word with tournament director Graham Fairhurst. And he has confirmed to us that Sulevic is going to miss Tuesday on the Pro Tour but he is going to play Wednesday okay. which is not a bad plan it'll be good preparation for Thursday I think yeah that's certainly certainly not a bad plan it'll be in the country anyway it's going to be in Manchester on Thursday it's only Barnsley Premier League uh, Barnsley Pro Tour action on Wednesday so <laughs> I think the hardest thing he's got to navigate getting from Barnsley to Manchester is that snake's pass. That's one tricky little road. Very beautiful, though. And then so takes on Peter Wright on Thursday. Daryl goes up against Michael Van Gerwen. There's Yoza on the right. As if we didn't know Matt. Yeah, so Matt Ward, manager of Yoza and Daryl Gurney. And with the team MDA haircut there, standard issue. Gurney hasn't managed to adopt it just yet. Is he cold? His jacket zipped up all the way to the top. It's not. It's not the warmest venue here, is it? But it's not stopped some top stuff. You know, Dave Chisnell evidently enjoyed himself. Rob Cross is again just Fifth doing what Rob Cross does. You can tell Yozza's not from Newcastle. If he was, he wouldn't be wearing a jacket. Not wearing anything. He's top off, would he? <laughs> Probably be wafting it around. This thing walking in a sheer wonderland. 131. There's young Tarek. Ever present, watching Daddy. Having a bit of bants with the other team. It's a tight game. It was all Sulevich early on. 60. And Gurney is pounding away. Just trying to get on level terms. Sixty. Uh, missed opportunity. Well, this is where it's getting tense because Mensor will feel he is by far the superior player over the first five and a half legs of this. He's averaging ten points more, and yet Daryl Gurney. Could steal this away and level the match. Oh, and misses double 15. Some effort that. There's that second 60 was gagging to be hit. But now Suda is for 58 to restore two leg cushion. Mm. 
left and low. Oh, he clattered into it. He had to avoid that dart, and he couldn't. Well, it's strange because we've seen him do that twice now. It looks like he has to go for a different bit of the double bed, and he's just stayed there stubbornly, and it's not worked for him. And Daryl Gurney makes him pay. And Gurney sticking in there in this one, very much second best, and yet, with the fact that he's throwing... Game You'd on. have to make him favourite for this game, would you not, in this situation? I, I absolutely would. I think Mensah Sulevich has allowed the momentum to go towards Thank Gurney. You. And he's not going to say no to a, a little gift like that. Mensah Sulevich has had almost three times as many darts at double in this match as Daryl Gurney. And Mensah, whose strong point is the finishing, that's always been his forte and where he, he wins and loses titles. I think George was having a word with another fan there. He, he threw somebody out yesterday for whistling, I believe. Don't mess with George. Yeah, he's got form. One hundred. He's just keeping an eye on things as the ref. He's got a lot to do on that stage. He's got two chalkers to look after. Got a share of two players, and he looks after everything else. It's his stage. 140. Well, Mensor was, he was like this at the World Championship, where he was beaten by, was it Ryan Joyce who did for him? Was it Ryan Searle? 50. One of the Ryans, I'm Searle, sure I think it was. It was. Ryan the Navy. Navies. <laughs> so, Mensur Sulevich. Yeah, lost 3 1 to Ryan Searle. Nice. But was smashing in 180s like I'd, I'd never seen him do before. It was unreal scoring, and yet the finishing was not as usual standard. And that's where you, that's the most important bit. <laughs> On the left-hand side of that split screen, you see the board, of course. On the right-hand side, we see the player. And constantly, I'm seeing Mensah Sudovic wafting that right arm, just shaking it out. 20 for tops. Tops of 4-3 and a break. More misses and more gesticulation. There it is again. He's just wafting both the arms. He's like a kid having a tantrum. Very, very odd. Oh, could he? Oh my, that would have given him a dart at his favourite double as well. 102. What? Well, There's here for 120. For Dow going to be in so strong on his throw all the way through this year, Mensor Sulevic is finding it very, very easy to break him because he keeps starting legs with loads of treble twenties. And he's done it again. 4-3 Mensor, and again, I mean, look, is, is that Mensor hey, with a problem Mensur or is that just Mensor being Mensor, i.e. a bit Game weird? I mean, we get the various gesticulations from Mensor. You get the dying swan and the flappy hands. I mean, it's, it's like basically doing the Macarena halfway through most of his games. He does use a little bit of chalk, doesn't he? A, well, a lot, yeah. So maybe one of the things that he started to do is when he's got extra residue on his hands, he flicks it away. He doesn't want to rub all of it off. But he does want the residual stuff to be off, so he just yeah, wafts his arm. Maybe. Doesn't use the oh, same amount of stuff as, say, a shot putter what, or a discus thrower. Well, I'm not sure. He does get through a lot. One hundred. mentioned that the winner of this one plays Chizzy. Well, 100. the way that Chizzy scored in the last game, good luck, lads. Well, I mean, look, Mensor has been throwing in a manner which suggests he could live with that. It's just that the finishing has not been good enough and it's allowed Darrell Gurney little opportunities. Yeah, 306 for Sudovic, 19s is prudent. Didn't stay on the 19s to try and score 76 with the first two dots. I'm surprised by that. This game has just settled down a little bit now. They're waiting for the next ball of fireworks. We haven't seen much in the way of fireworks from Gurney. We've just seen him sort of steadily 
plodding along. And if he's given an opportunity, he's taking it. The question is, how many opportunities is Mensor going to afford him? Because he has outscored him from the very first dart of this game and he continues to smash in the trouble twenties. Because that is a sixth 180 for Mensor. One. Trying to create some room. Uses it wonderfully. Doesn't move back. Oh, I'm surprised by that. He was off centre. And did that contribute to him missing low and left? Possibly. He would have been further away. Only one dart for Mensor. He decides that double 16 is the target he wants. And this time, that's the Mensor we know. When he's under pressure, gets I one like dart Darryl at double, he pins it. Game on. Five, three. He's opened up a two-leg gap. The last time he did that, he immediately surrendered it. Okay, and he knows the score now. And yes, I know it's five, three. 60. But he knows the score. And that is, I go three straight or I'm going home. And I suppose technically he's not going home because he's going straight to Barnsley. Yeah, Barnsley, then Manchester, then Graz in Austria. Doesn't sound right without Russ Breer, does it? Well, yes, Russ was our MC last year. Certain words, 60. certain places just sound better from Russ Breer. Graz is one of them. Do you think Graz was a, a really good addition last year? Fantastic, incredible crowds, packed out from day one, and saw the ferret go on and claim his first big stage title in BDC Darts. They took Sudovic out in the semi-finals with that amazingly one-sided crowd. Yeah, never seems to quite manage to do it in Austria, does he, Mensor? It's almost like the weight of expectation is just a bit too much for him. And yet, everywhere else on the Euro Tour, he is absolutely mustered. And I wonder which others we will see from Austria next week in the Home Nation qualifiers. Will we see Christian Kallinger? Will we see any of the Rodriguez boys? You will have to stay tuned to us on Friday to find Come out. On, Guest commentary from the world number one, Michael Van Gogh in there. He's just come and invaded our commentary box. 100. Right, look. Oh, you require 141. Well, unless this 141 goes, Mensil Sulevich has got a very real chance of continuing this incredible record because six times he has beaten Daryl Gurney. Once in the Premier League, all five others on the Euro Tour. And he might be about to make it a sixth on the Euro Tour. Because double 12 completes a 6 3 win. And Mensor Sulevich goes through to the quarter finals of the German Darts Open. And we have seen the top.